All right, here, so let's look at one more example of uh, trying to show whether an identity is true or correct. So uh, our example on A here, we said that was true. Part B, uh, is secant x over 1 plus secant x going to be the same thing as 1 minus cosine x over sine squared x? So um, again, to me, sometimes, uh, again, getting started can be the tricky thing. So you know, how on earth would we go about showing this? Um, well, one thing that I think about is, especially, uh, one thing that I always use is everything goes back to sines and cosines. So maybe I should try to turn, I'm going to work on the left side, and I'm going to rewrite it in terms of sine and cosine. Well, there's really no sines. Uh, secant is just going to be 1 over cosine x, and then we would have uh, 1 plus 1 over cosine x. Well, let's see here. Um, there's a lot of different things we can do to sort of uh, start simplifying this down. What I'm going to do now to try to get rid of some of these fractions um, is I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator of this simply by cosine x. Well, let's see. If we do that, we'll get cosine x times cosine x in the numerator, which would just equal 1. In the denominator, we would have cosine x times 1, which would be cosine x. Um, and then we would have cosine x times 1 over cosine x, which would just give us another positive 1. So I'm thinking, huh, is there any way that, that equals 1 minus cosine x? Well, again, to me, it's not, you know, it's not readily apparent just yet. But I think, how could I make a sine squared appear? Well, there's relationship between sine and cosine, so maybe um, you know you could always try maybe multiplying by another cosine on the top and bottom, and then at least you would get cosine squared, and maybe we could uh, bring sine squared into it. I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm go going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate, cosine x minus one, the conjugate of the denominator. And the reason why I'm going to do that is, well, in the numerator, it does two things. In the numerator, I'm going to get my, uh, I, I won't exactly get the 1 minus cosine x. I'm going to get sort of the opposite sign, but it's close. And the other thing I'm recognizing, so in the numerator, we'll just have cosine x minus 1, which is pretty close. And the other thing I'm recognizing is that uh, this is going to be a difference of perfect squares. Cosine and cosine is cosine squared x. We'll get a negative cosine x plus cosine x, and those will just cancel out. And then our last term will be negative 1. Well, let's see here. Um, so I'm still wondering, is this equal to 1 minus cosine x over sine squared x? Well, there's definitely uh, you know, a relationship between cosine squared and sine squared. And remember, the identity says cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. So I want to manipulate this. Uh, I want to try to make it look like cosine squared x minus 1 on one side or the other. And what I can do is I can subtract 1 from both sides. So the negative 1 will go over. At the same time, I'm going to subtract sine squared. So hey, it says cosine squared x minus 1 is the same thing as negative sine squared. Well. So what we're left with on the left side, we've got cosine x minus 1 over negative sine squared x. But um, what we can do now is we can simply uh, multiply the top and the bottom by negative 1. So negative 1 over negative 1. And what that's going to give us, it's going to give us a negative cosine x plus 1. So negative cosine x plus 1, we can really just rewrite that as 1 minus cosine x. And then we would, our negatives would cancel out in the denominator. We would be left with sine squared x. And hey, that's what we were wondering if it was equal to. So I would say yes, uh, those in fact are equal. So this would be also uh, a correct identity. And we would say this statement is true. So again, I think this problem's you know definitely, you know, in the, f the first one, you know, it's like get common denominators. I think to me that's a little, a little more clear. Uh, this one I think is a little trickier. Um, and again, I think there's more than one way to get to the right answer, but uh, um, you know, I think really what you have to do is just kind of get your hands dirty and play a little bit. 
Um, and just always keep in mind, you know, usually, you know, it always eventually has to do with using the correct identity. So just make sure you know your identities and always kind of keep those in the back of your mind as to how you can use them.